What is the single most underappreciated stock in all of technology, not just semiconductors? There's no question. It's Intel. Said it earlier this week, saying it now. If you know how I keep talking about the stunning resurgence of the personal computer, guess who benefits from that? You have the company that makes the best processors in the world. They've also got amazing exposure to the hottest area in business, the data center, and to one that I know you're all interested in, autonomous driving. Two fabulous, fast-growing end markets. Intel has a great story. And while the stock has run up substantially from $33 last summer to about $51 today, it remains incredibly cheap. Don't take it from me, though. Let's check in with Brian Krasanich, the terrific CEO of Intel, get a better sense of where his company's headed. Mr. Krasanich, welcome back to Mad Money. Thanks. Good to be here. Good to see you. Okay. A piece of research comes out this week. I never thought I'd see this. It's from, it's from Citi. And it says, sentiment, Intel most hated. How was that possible after these quarters and the numbers are putting up? You know, I think it takes time to, when you're talking about a company that's known for one product, one strategy, and you're talking about then shifting it, it takes time for people to believe your strategy. And as we've moved to a much broader data-centric strategy, right. it's, I think Wall Street's just now starting to believe and understand just what that means. And you see it in our stock price, right? You see right. people believing it now. Well, we, we're talking to HP today. I mean, it's not like the uh, personal computer, the workstation, the notebook's doing badly. They're, some of them are growing double digits. Data center, fastest growing business that I know. I mean, you're playing in every fast end, and you're a dominant player in every fast. Yeah, the PC is still a great business, right? right. And, uh, you know, we continue to be excited. And like you said, I saw Dion earlier. H right. HP is a great example of innovation going on there. But if you look at our data-centric areas, the, the data center, the, the FPGAs with our Altera acquisition, uh, IoT, those businesses are growing double digits, and they are making up now f over uh, close to 50% of our revenue. And, and more than 50% of our 14 profit. 14 times earnings? That yeah. doesn't make sense to me. Well, but it's, so people will believe that as they okay. start to see it quarter after quarter. It's about delivering results quarter after quarter. All right, so uh, because you are so uh, embedded in, and taking off in 5G, immediately people say, well, listen, Broadcom, Qualcomm, Intel's got to move in. I, I, I'm out here enough to know that, that and some things can just be chatter, but people said you hired a banker and you wanted Broadcom because you were big in 5G, but you want to be biggest. Yes or no? You know, I, I can't speak about rumors, but I can tell you we, we've made two big acquisitions, biggest acquisitions in Intel's history with Altera and, and Mobileye. We're heads down on making those successful and right, and there are growth engines for the future. Uh, and, and uh, you know, 5G is important, but we think we already have the end-to-end -end product from the data center, which is important in 5G, all the way out to the modem. We have those products uh, already. All right. Well, you know I question you on Mobileye. I spent a lot of money uh, buying it, $15 billion, and only about 500 employees. Let me bounce the theory off of where I may have been wrong. I didn't realize you don't want to be in just parts. You want to be with the OEM, the original equipment manufacturer. And that's who Mobileye's contracts were. If you're with them, a lot of things go a lot easier. You, you, you got most of it. The other thing, you're right, it's, it's not just about selling parts. It's about selling a platform. Right. So you're right, it was a small number of employees, but some of the smartest employees on the planet, we believed, around building the algorithms and the models for how you drive and building a model and a methodology for building crowdsourced maps. Okay. And those maps are critical for driving an autonomous vehicle. Okay, uh, I know you as an engineer know you as a straight shooter. You, you've been, you know, there's things that have happened this year. We're just going to clear them up right now, okay. okay? Because you're here and you're straight. So we're just going to clear them up. First of all, the security flaws, they are of a concern to people. The security flaws in the chips, they talk to, people talk to me about these when I've been out here. And I, I want to believe that it's behind you and you take security first. But I'm hearing too many people are saying, tell Brian, this is really worrisome. It's worrying the data center. It's worrisome for what the bad guys can do. Can you alleviate the fears or is it just the new nature of things? Well, so, so we uh, did do our security first pledge. And so we are saying, you know, very clearly that we do now and we have in the past put security as our primary concern. We announced today that all of the CPUs five years or younger, so newer, uh, have mitigations now in software. And we're starting to produce in the second half of this year where we put those mitigations against those exploits in the actual silicon itself. So, so those, we believe, were getting behind us. But, but security is an ongoing thing. Right. It's like, uh, I always remind people, it's kind of like your house, right? As long as you have a door or a window to get in, somebody's going to try and bust it open. 
And so, key, keep your house, keep your computer patched, keep your system up to date, uh, because we're constantly making improvements. Did, were there companies who held back, customers who held back, wait, waiting for this day that it's 100%? You know, there's no indication because we, we committed to get those software patches out to them and have them in the, in, in the latest uh, uh, CPUs as well. Okay. Now, uh, Wall Street Journal does a story which says, Intel CEO stock sale called unusual by private security specialists. I'm just quoting them. They're saying you had a, a, that you sold a lot of stock. It was a prearranged sale. But uh, can we put to rest the idea that this was some sort of uh, something that, that was nefarious? The government, that I can tell, did not open an investigation. This happened. You sold stock. Mistake because of where the stock price went. But I want very much to say, you know what? This is no news. Can I say it? Yeah, it, completely unrelated. This was about me just simply doing a diversification. You know, Intel has a very complete process that I go through any time right. I want to sell that ensures I have no insider information. And then, as you said, we put it on a 10B BIF1 plan, and, and you know, I have lose control of it after that. Right. Now, people have to understand that because I've done many of these myself. You, you, it's prearranged, meaning you don't know what's going to happen at your company. Yeah, up now, or down. But let me ask you something. I come here and tell you I think the stock's the cheapest I've seen it. Now, I'd be a buyer, not a seller. Even for diversification, why sell? I mean, particularly because, well, look what's happened. Well, it's still my, my biggest single holding. So okay. it's still my biggest single uh, investment I have. And I'm, I'm more excited about the future than, than you. And I, it, you know, I listened to Pete uh, earlier this morning, and I, or yesterday, excuse me. And I think right. the only thing he got wrong is it's got more room than even when he said so. Well, you no, know, he, he has been, uh, he's been adamant, and that's right. Are you worried about China retaliation? Now, we see this Broadcom deal. We know that the president killed this deal. Cynthia's killed the deal because they're worried that almost the Broadcom was a, I, I, I wouldn't use the term fifth column, that they genuinely believe that they were going to give 5G secrets of Qualcomm to China. Does this not hurt you in some way? Well, I, I do think we have to be careful about making sure that, you know, I believe in fair trade and we need to make sure it's fair trade. But, but a trade war and a trade, you know, uh, uh, complication doesn't help any of uh, our business or many businesses in this industry. So the uh, balance between those two is what we need to really strive. You uh, committed $7 billion investment in America, probably one of the largest. Uh, the president, as far as I'm concerned, clearly uh, knows Intel is a good actor. Does it help to call him and say what you just said to me just now? Yeah, it does. I mean, we were there. We talked to him about our investment in Arizona factory. That's continuing to build out. You, you know what I think it, we're proudest is seven, more than 70 percent of what we build is built inside the U.S., more than 70 percent of what we sell goes and ships outside of the U.S. Yeah, she told me that that's a highly we, unusual ratio. Right. And we, we believe we're one of the great American manufacturers. We covered data center. We, we covered uh, the PC, we covered 5G. Uh, drones are not a, uh, let's just say they're not a gimmick. And you're a leader. What does it mean to be a leader? You know, this is another discussion about data. You know, I, I've talked about that data is the new oil. It, it is going to drive economies and drive businesses in the future. Drones collect or use massive amounts of data. Right. The drone shows we put on, you know, it's one PC driving 1,200 drones, all perfectly choreographed. Data, data, data. Data, data, data. Now, and when you do your uh, sponsorship for the Olympics, do you get the point across that it's, it's not just, you know, the Blue Man app was so powerful that it did make us think, you know what, Intel inside. Do we, are we learning from things like the Olympics that Intel is inside a lot more than just this? It is. It, it, it's, you're, you're seeing that not only is Intel inside a lot of other things and people start to ask that question, well, if they're in that, what else could they be in? But they also see us as cool. We're a cool company when you, when you do these kinds of programs. Well, I would not have described the old Intel as cool, and it's okay to be cool. It is. It is. Okay. Well, that's Brian Crusader. She's the CEO of Intel Corporation. Once again, I reiterate, the stock is the most inexpensive stock, not in the semiconductor sector, but in all of technology. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.